All right, so section two of unit six is all about how the energy that we talked about in section one, kinetic and potential energy, transforms and changes forms and changes types and goes back and forth between them. All right, so again, when we say something is conserved, we mean that, that the total amount of it remains constant. So, and when a system is closed, the energy in the system, so closed being no energy can enter or leave it, the energy is conserved. But if a system is open, so energy can come in and out, energy is not conserved because the, amount, the total amount of energy doesn't stay the same. Um, when work is done, or so work, remember, if you think back to last semester, when you do work on something, you add energy to it. So the energy increases of the system. And when work is done by the system, so it expands, it's, it releases energy, that, that makes the energy in the system decrease. So the amount of energy doesn't stay the same in those situations when it's an open system, when energy can go back and forth. <clears throat> All right, so mechanical energy is really just the sum of, of kinetic and potential. Because that's all that our mechanical energies are kinetic and potential. So the sum of those is mechanical energy. All right, so mechanical energy is, is often conserved. And because of that, we can say that when they're, when they're conserved, that the initial mechanical energy, which is the sum of kinetic and potential, is equal to the final mechanical energy. Notice how it says in the absence of friction, because friction will take out energy. All right, so we're going to show you a little bit of this as a, with a little simulation to show how this energy goes back and forth. Okay, so we have this simulation. If you want to play with this, the address is right up here. You can kind of play around with it. But what I want to look at is I want to look at these bar graphs over here. What could they call a histograph? And right now, the potential energy is equal to the total energy because the object is not moving. Okay, now if I, if I let it go, and I'm going to put this in the slow motion to kind of show you what happens as, we go, as it goes down. But as it goes down, you notice the potential energy goes down, the kinetic energy goes up. And if you think about it, it should make sense. Because the potential energy, you're getting closer to the ground, so your, your height, that MGH piece, the height is decreasing, which means that you're having less potential energy, but your kinetic energy is increasing. And as it goes farther and farther down, its speed up here increases, which means your kinetic energy is going to increase. And then at the bottom, it's all, all my our energy is now kinetic energy. So we're gonna not we're gonna take that off of slow mo and just hit play and it'll go run quick. Okay, like a ramp. Alright. Now let's take a look at something like this. Okay, so as you notice, I'm I'm taking this this skateboarder, the higher I take them, the more potential they get. And if I let them go, what you'll notice is the energy goes back and forth. Okay, at the very bottom it's all kinetic, at the very top it's all potential. Other thing to notice, this this little skateboarder only goes can only go so high because the amount of energy that I gave them at the beginning is at present all the way through. So if I do this and I take the skateboarder and I only put it here and I hit start, it can't go all the way up because it didn't have enough energy initially to get all the way to the top. Now we're going to do this. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the skateboarder here and hit play. And what you'll see is here there is kinetic and potential because it's still off the ground. The only time it has no kinetic energy is this one spot here, or no potential energy. It has no kinetic energy at the very top. Okay. Now, last part with this is you can actually, on this simulation, you can build a little, almost like a roller coaster. And what I'm going to do And something like this. 
And what you'll notice is that skater can't make it up to the top. I'm going to take away, take away any friction. But if I do this, it can only reach as high as my initial energy started. Okay, so you can't, this can't get high, be any higher. If this, this high, hill is higher than my initial hill, we can't get up there because we don't have enough energy. You kind of think of it like a roller coaster. The first hill of the roller coaster is always the highest. Why? Because it has to have the most energy there. Then as it goes down, just like these bar graphs are showing you, your kinetic energy goes back and forth. Okay. So your total energy remains constant. This, it's the amount of kinetic or the amount of, and the amount of potential changes, but the sums of your kinetic and potential will always equal your total, thus the energy being conserved. All right. So if you think of it like a pendulum, like a little, like a, the end of a clock swinging back and forth, at the very top, at the top of its swing, all of its energy is the potential energy. At the bottom, when it's on the, the lowest part of, it, of its motion, it's going the fastest, so it has a lot of kinetic energy. In fact, all of its kinetic energy is kinetic at that point. As it goes up, that kinetic is being transformed into potential energy, like we saw in the simulation. All right, so we're going to look at a conservation of energy problem. So we're starting from rest. A child zooms down a slide from an initial height of three meters. What is her speed at the bottom of the slide? And she has a mass of 25 kilograms. All right, so we know the initial height is three meters. We know her mass is 25 kilograms. We know her initial velocity is zero meters per second. We know her final height, because she's getting to the ground, is zero meters. So we're looking for her final velocity. Okay, so we know that the potential plus the kinetic energies at the top have to equal the potential plus kinetic energies at the bottom. So we have to use our potential and kinetic energy formulas from the previous video. All right, so level is the zero level chosen is the ground at the bottom of the slide. So because the, the, the child ends at the zero, the final gravitational potential energy is zero at the bottom because she has no height. Height is zero, no gravitational potential energy. Okay, so the initial potential energy is at the top of the slide. But because the child starts at rest, there's no initial kinetic energy. Okay, so there's no kinetic energy at the top and there's no potential energy at the bottom. So therefore, kinetic, the final kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared final, final squared. So we know our initial potential energy, gravitational potential energy is the mass times acceleration to gravity times height, 25 kilograms times 9.81 times 3 is 736 joules. Our kinetic energy final is one half times our mass times our velocity final squared. We don't know our velocity final. So we know then that initial mechanical energy is equal to final mechanical energy. So our initial potential energy plus initial kinetic energy is equal to final potential energy plus final kinetic energy. Our initial potential energy up here of 736 plus our initial kinetic energy is zero because it's not moving is equal to our final potential energy, since it's at the zero point, the height is zero, there's no final potential energy, plus our initial kinetic energy, one half times the mass of 25 kilograms, times our VF, which we don't know. So you do 736 joules, divided by 12.5, a half of 25 is 12.5, 736 divided by 12.5, is 7.67 meters per second. And that's how you do the math when, you have, when you're looking for kinetic energy. Because the mechanical en energy at the beginning has to equal your mechanical energy at the end. So that's the end of the second video. Make sure you go through the, the 
formative assessment. Again, make sure you, you get 80% or better on that. And if you have questions, we'll answer them in class. Have a good day.